I'm not, I was not, <laughs> I, was, I was not sleeping. I was not sleeping. <laughs> I was not, okay? I was not sleeping. I, I, <laughs> you look at the Sleeping Beauty. It's Sleep Tease. Hashtag you know Sleep Tease, everyone. You know what, do you know what it was, yeah? I've had so many sleepless nights following this team. Mm. This was the first time I was able to really, <laughs> really get into a deep sleep. I was just dreaming about the goals scored. And what do you know? I, I, so I did you celebrate too hard? I did. <laughs> I did. You did, didn't you? You had a bit too many. <laughs> Shut down the 24 off licenses immediately, okay? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Oh god. I, I wake up right and I look at the because you know what? I, I woke up earlier and then I went back to sleep because I just completely forgot that we agreed to 10 a.m. I thought it was 11 a.m. for some reason. And then I look at the group chat and I just see <laughs> I just see every what was that jiggly puff what? <laughs> Jigglypuff tees. <laughs> bro, you just said you're a Jigglypuff, bro. You're a Jigglypuff. Yo. When I seen that, I was like, yo, what's going on? And I, yeah, I just, I just, I just scrolled up and just saw just so, so much. So, spam. bro, bro, you, you send the link on the group chat saying it's for 10 a.m. and you think it's at 11 a.m. No, do you know what? Yeah, I said that last night. No, I said that. I said that last night before. You, 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 you wrote it right, right next to the link you've written. Link for 10 a.m. and a high five. <laughs> you, you, you don't know what Matisse is writing at, at that time of the hour. Like, even he's not aware. Oh, yeah. We should have double checked on him. We should have double checked. Yeah, I put that last night. A lot changed since then. A lot changed. Crazy. Um, he, he was only two drinks in. <laughs> he was only two drinks in and then he ended up eight or nine and he forgot 10 became it's, 11 it's, or you can sleep Chelsea that's spot on <laughs> that's absolutely spot on this is why you can't win too often in life because it, look look at it so you get complacent man you get complacent <laughs> come on yeah. Yeah, bring me the L's <laughs> <laughs> but we're here and we're sharp and we're losing aren't we we're here we're sharp yeah man it's too funny man <laughs> But well, good morning. You know what I'm saying, Eunice. How are you doing? Good morning. How are you feeling? Where are I you, mean, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, no, are so, you so, yeah, I'm 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 away. I'm not at home. <laughs> so, oh, so, we we figured yeah. that. Saw, we figured that. I saw you. Were, <laughs> I know you're I home you very well now. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just you know it's absolutely um what's it iconic now, but um <laughs> no nah, honestly the 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 win has just helped so much because look we. We said we had to win. Mm. It was a must. And we ended up doing it in quite some fashion, I would say, compared to other games. Fair play. We got the job done, even though we didn't dominate as much as I think some people would have liked. But that's not, that's not the most important thing. We get three points. We now move to Burnley. We can beat Burnley. That's the best that we can do going into Arsenal. So I'm just happy. I'm relieved. We found where the goal is. We know what a net is again. Um mm. We got we got we got players assisting like how they're meant to assist. We got players touching mm. the ball down how they're meant to touch the ball down. I mean, finally, so I'm happy. It was beautiful. <laughs> I must say, it was it was a beautiful sight um, to behold. Miz, we nope. didn't even have a phone call. We usually phone. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> but I think we were just enjoying a lot. We thought, you know what? Let's let's just enjoy. We get, we got plenty of time to phone call. Um, no, nah, man, I, I had a, like my, my voice, like I, I was, cause I've got a throat infection for the past few days. I struggled through that particular stream, but I still, I still screamed up and down every time we scored, every time there was a moment, um, uh, by the time the watch along was over, like, honestly, my throat was absolutely like smashed. Um, but yeah, man, enjoyed that game a lot. Really did. Uh, so much energy. A lot of good movement, some nice goals as well. I know Breyer's one was a little bit tad lucky, but we created that situation. Um, yeah, man, I'm looking to looking to get into this uh, conversation with you guys. Very, very happy, man. That's all I can say. You're on, you're on mute, bro. You're on mute. You're all not having a I good day, bro. You're not having a good day. He's not at all. It's a shambles. You're all not having a good day, bro. <laughs> start again. Hey, start again. Start the show again, bro. Okay. Uh, Take two. Uh, <laughs> 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 Bubba, Bubba, 
New kit, fresh kit on. Is that that's without the sponsor? Of course, we all had to, yeah, had to cop that without. The... I oh, think well, I just hit hard. That. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Good Listen, we're going to get into sponsors. that in a minute. Yeah, Eunice yeah. and I, we chatted into... before. We we said all whites. Yeah. We 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 because <laughs> yeah. we're looking clean today. It's That's perfectly right. balanced, yeah. right? The it is perfectly balanced. The left is blue, the right is white. Nice. Yeah. Brilliant, bro. Brilliant. Uh, By the way, that jersey looks got... really good. That jersey it looks does. nice. And it's two. Yeah. It's it's two goals already in October, Bubba, and more mm. than the whole of last <laughs> month. More than the whole of last month in all comps, may I add? <laughs> yeah. Uh, at least we'll have options now for goal of the month, unlike last month <laughs> where we had only one goal from Jackson. Mm. Yeah, it felt great, bro. Uh, last night it was a good performance. Uh, first half it was clean. Second half it was professional, as the title mm. is perfectly put. Spot. We managed the game really well. Uh, that is something that I missed from us. Uh, uh, defensively, we were solid. Apart from that one chance that Lukic had, I don't think so. Fulham created. Uh, much opportunities, no. and no. we we had a couple of chances to kill the game. Also, Matson hitting the post and whatnot uh, in the second half. So yeah, it was all good. Uh, I got a bit of a scare uh, when Mudrik got off due to injury. Then Kaiseido mm. limped off in the end, and then Broya was also limping. Sterling came on. Sterling, by the way, I I was glad he did not start as a striker, bro, because when he came on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he put on another sting he, face, but I'm still back Miz, here, man. man. <laughs> Miz. He's still my man, bro. He's still my man. <laughs> Miz, I'm he's, telling you. When you... <laughs> he's I can't tell you. Us, he did man, stink but... it up. He did. I'm not even going to lie. He did. But look, man. Mm. <laughs> I still believe in this guy. I really do. Listen, really there's going to come there's gonna come a day on All You Can Eat Chelsea where Miz comes on and goes, I've had enough. <laughs> I, I, he's, he's, he's crap. I don't he's want him finished. anymore. Like that day's gonna finished. come. He's finished. He's gonna come. That day's gonna come. <laughs> That's why last last episode. I when when Sterling plays on the wing, listen, anything can happen. But up front, hmm. you can't, I can't tell you how much I was scared of the possibility of this guy playing up front. I really can't tell you. <laughs> Holding up play. Not, like when we try to go long airily, he would have sucked. <laughs> it would have been true. It true. Been it wouldn't yeah. be so peak. Um, but listen, 2 0 win, two goals in the space of 82 seconds. Um, really, really kind of almost shocked that we played the way we did because we, we haven't been so used to it. When I was looking at Fulham previously before the game, I saw nine, I thought 20th on shots, I think, 19th on big chances created. I thought, wow, this, this is a team that really struggled going forward. We should be able to keep a clean sheet. And we did. First half, we limited them to basically nothing. Um, mm. Who was you guys' man of the match before? Like, I kind of want to start there because there was a lot of it was, I, it was. It was given to Gallagher, wasn't it? In the end, mm. I was and, and I've got and I've got no issues with that. To be honest, uh, it was yeah. officially given to Gallagher. I, I had mm. Lewa Lewa Cole was my man of the match, okay. but I know there's big shouts for Cole Palmer. Cole Palmer was mm. unbelievable, yeah. man. The, yeah. the the way he reads the, the he's an interception king. He reads the game so well. He's always there intercepting. I uh, loved it. Could have been quite a few players. I think I think Enzo yeah. probably could have had a shot as well. I thought he had a very strong strong game. Kaiseido had a strong game. Kaiseido. Um, yeah. Mudrik, because he played half the game, that's why I was a little yeah. bit like, okay, can you yeah. really be man of the match? Um, for me, it was Liwa Colwell, uh, not just because of his lovely dink assist, but it was a total game. I, I don't know, man. I think we need to have a conversation as a whole here. Is this guy actually a left back now? Like that was a very good left back performance, I have to say. It was bombing up nah, and down, delivered that pink, pink cross. Um, I mean, you know, Maurizio Pochettino is utilizing him as a left back. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit strange out about this think, situation now. So yeah. Credit, credit to Colwell because for me, he's still a centre back. I, when we watched him midweek for, yeah. against Brighton, yeah. it was brilliant. Like. For me, that is what I want to see from him is in that centre-back position, just playing those passes around the corner. It was a brilliant pass for, for Mudrik. And um, the only reason why I say he's not a left-back is because I'm never going to want him to overlap, underlap, you know, invert as well. Like, it's just it's just not maximising him completely. He was in a position where he may even get into those positions as a centre-back if we're high, high, enough up, up the, high, high enough up the pitch. And he, he delivered, man. It was an unbelievable pass, like you said, but... For me, I'm, I'm, but I'm still what would you say? 
if if he continues, if if Poch continues to deploy him as a left back for matches yeah. to come, when would be a point where you'll start going? I mean, do we start considering him as a left back now because he consistently plays there? Like, when will be that point? Do you know what I'm saying? You know, we've now seen a lot of the matches. I think it will, it'll take a, it will take a long time because he's played his whole career at centre back. Last last season at Brighton at the Emirates, when I watched him, unbelievable at centre back, um, yeah. on loan centre back, academy centre back. So he'd probably have to play there the whole season for me to be like, okay. I mean, listen, if he's playing well in that position, obviously keep doing what you're doing. I guess you know. I mean, it doesn't really matter as long as winning games. That's what that matters. We've got yeah. big games coming up against top teams that we probably might need three centre-backs, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. It's, might, we might necessarily need it. Um, and obviously, Chilwell's out and Matson's not being played there once. When he speaks about his left-back options, he never mentions Matson. So I've kind of given he up on the does. whole Matson playing yeah. left-back. Mm-hmm. He doesn't mention it. He mentioned Kukureo, yeah. Colwell and Chilwell. And Kukureo right now is going yeah. to play right-back. And might I add, this guy is playing really well at right-back Bruh. in the last two games. <laughs> I I think so Martson will definitely leave. Martson will definitely leave. The way he treats yeah, Martson, like uh, it. it's because of the force right now. Because he's forced to play Martson right now because he does not have options. He's forced to play Colville. He wants to play Colville as a left back, and now he's forced also because he does not have any options left. There is no Chilwell, no Gusto, no fullbacks uh, virtually available right now. Once the lot is fit. We'll have Nkunku back. Uh, we'll have Reese James. We'll have Gusto and everyone back. I don't yeah. see Martson uh, getting a minute in that team. And yeah, I agree. Uh, don't well. forget, we've also bought this guy called Romeo Lavia. <laughs> we forgot about him, <laughs> and he also yeah. he will also come back at some point. So I don't think so that uh, any of these players will get a look in after the team is fit. But we'll. All the guys we fit at the same time, that's the issue. I don't think so that no. all of them will be fit at the same time. Kind of things no, that are happening around the club. Because because we we actually maybe forget how many injuries we have because we won. But we have so many mm. injuries. So mm. that's why I'm not really mm. buying that yep. this is the long-term plan. We forgot the about Badia Badi Shil also. Not. Yeah, forgot Badi about Shil, Badi yeah. Shil yeah, yeah, that's true. True. Mm. Yeah. Once he's fit, he'll also come back. He's a good player. Fofana, next season, he'll be back. <laughs> yeah. Chaloba is also somewhere there, I hope. He'll be, he'll be sold. He'll be sold. He'll be sold. More, more, 100%. More, than, yeah. more than Fofana and um, Chaloba, I think Buddy Shield will cause a bit of a uh, problem for the other CBs. Specifically, I think, probably Thiago Silva. Um, yeah, as good as Thiago Silva was against Fulham. And so was this, I see. I think Buddy Shields, uh, you know, uh, health coming back. Yeah, that will, we'll probably start seeing a shift there somewhere. Yeah. Mm. The Sassy as well, underrated now that you mention him. I mean, mm. I think the last couple of games, he's really improved. A lot of people have been saying it in the chat. And I, I, I forgot to mention it in my review. I don't know why, but I said in my watch along, this guy is not making errors. He's he's mm. playing it some really stable. nice switches, some nice passes. Airily, this guy is so dominant. And I remember that even in his shaky start to the season, he was still airily very dominant. Um, he's just he's just going about his business very quietly. He's just doing his job. Um, so he definitely des- deserves some credit because for a player that at the start of the season everyone was really shitting themselves about, he's he's not he's not giving me that vibe of oh. I need to be worried about him right now. He, he's giving me that vibe where, to be honest, I had I had him starting and I had Silver out of that mm. team just to put Cole uh, centre back again and to just reshuffle it. So, but yeah, I mean the fact that we have so many different players that we think could be man the match speaks volumes because it just goes to show how much of a good team performance it was. Um, Eunice, what what formation do you think we were playing? Because there was a lot of back and forth about four two three one. Obviously, when it was read out on the team sheet on the graphic online, it was like Gallagher playing deeper. We saw Enzo drop deeper, um, and then Gallagher get a bit more advanced. And I was like, "Yeah, yes, we've made it. Yeah. We finally made it out of the hood." <laughs> <laughs> you know what's mad? Um, we all saw the lineup and we were scared, weren't we? That Enzo was playing in the ten again. Um, yeah. But when you actually watch during the game, crazily enough, this is going to sound mad. Did you see Frank Lampard's analysis before kickoff? I didn't listen no? to it purely because I was already live. But 
Yeah, okay, fair. What did he say? But he, he, yeah, he, he was obviously um, a pundit for Sky before the game. And mm. they asked him what his team would be. And he had um, Caicedo as the six and then Enzo and Gallagher as the eight. And funnily enough, we kind of played to that sort of way during the game, at least post the goals, where we had Caicedo who was sitting a little more. Enzo wasn't going as far forward as a 10 would, but Gallagher was also joining him. And it did kind of look like at that point it was 2 8 to an extent. Mm. Um, so uh, was Lamps on to something? Are we going to say fair play, Lampard? I mean, maybe, but. Um, Bring him back. <laughs> <laughs> bring Lambs back. Um, wow, I'll say bring him back, bro. Bring him back <laughs> so it, it did. It, it did seem like it was actually a, um, a, a four-three-three to an extent, with a false nine later on, and Sterling being that false nine when Bro had to come off. So um, yeah, and to be honest, look, I'm totally, I'm totally cool with that. I, I think it, it had good balance, but. One thing to analyse as well is I think that this isn't going to be working against every single team. Like the way that we played wasn't going to be a thing that's just going to function against every opponent. Like yesterday, it fit perfectly and fair play. But you are going to come against teams where you might have to play with a strong double pivot or you, know, you might have to be able to shift if there's going to be tough, tough opponents to a back three in some situations. Like that's going to happen, I think. But overall yesterday... Yeah, um, that I think is how we played. We didn't really want the ball as much as I think we would have liked against some other teams and that worked to our advantage because Fulham were just open at the back. Um, mm. So overall, pretty, pretty well. 4-3-3, three, three, lethal counter-attacks and it worked. Yeah, I think I think the balance was spot on for once and yeah. I've always felt, for me, Gallagher's not a 10 miss, he's not a 6, he's not... He's not best in a double pivot and he's not, I don't really like him in the 10 either sometimes because if you play through him, completely play through him, you might run into some problems as well. But him in that right side eight position where he was at Palace, that was where he was in serious form when he was out there. And in a team where there was a bit of space in behind and it was a bit transition and we saw against Fulham, they gave us all that space as well. Same against Bournemouth, Villa. Maybe teams don't respect us anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what it was, and he was brilliant, man. He was brilliant. He won the him and Palmer on that side winning the ball. It was it was mad. The 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 press over there. Do you know what? These are the moments that I love so much. You know how, and I think you guys will all agree. You guys, I've seen all of your videos, right? How we've been skeptical about Gallagher, but these are the moments I cherish, where I can actually come on the platform. And, and praise this particular player. And, and I have to say, yeah. it is the one game I do want to see consistency. I want to probably liken his um, role to probably Rodrigo de Paul for Argentina, how he plays a little bit sort of a bit in front of Enzo and McAllister, but he does all of the engine work, Rod Rodrigo de Paul. Now, I'm not saying Rodrigo de Paul is all just about running, running, running. Obviously, he's got loads of technical ability, but... What I saw from Gallagher, and I don't know if you guys noticed this, I did see quite a lot of one-touch passes from Gallagher. Receive, yeah. pass, receive, pass. It was him who went in for the duel earlier on. He won the duel, then he put, slipped through uh, Amanda Breuer, where Breuer did everything, and then he hit it for six. But it was <laughs> it was Gallagher. It was Gallagher who won that duel and slipped that pass through to Breuer. And there was few other moments in the first half specifically with the ball Gallagher really did impress me. I've I've never had any doubts about Gallagher in regards to off the ball. He's mm. sensational off the ball. He will run, run, run. He will track people down. He will tackle. He will do the lot. I've never had any qualms about that. I always had issues about him with the ball because he plays a lot deeper with Caicedo, and I've always been uh, skeptical about that. But there was a switch, as Matisse, you've uh, you know uh, touched on. Poch probably just said, Enzo, come a bit deeper. So you're more involved in the nitty gritty of things from the lead, uh, build up and let Gallagher just be a little bit further up. Now, if we lose the ball further up, Gallagher will be the first one there trying to close everything down and trying to press. And I think that in itself works. Gallagher's not there to be the creator. Gallagher's just literally there to be the menace, basically. Mm -hmm. But start the menace up front. Don't be deep where you become a menace for us because you don't have the quality <laughs> to, 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 to build up. So 
I've got no issues if Poch deploys Gallagher in that manner. I've had issues because Poch was deploying Gallagher as a as a deep lying playmaker type of a player. You're not that guy. Yeah. But I have to say, against Fulham, he started to impress me a little bit more with the ball. So praise and a lot of praise for him for this particular match against Fulham. I want to see him consistently do this. And only then I will start changing my tune on him that, you know what? Maybe he's just more than, you know, a Cobham graduate. Maybe he's more than just a, you know, passion, proper chills. Maybe he's, you know, here to belong. Um but yeah, that was a very good performance from Gallagher. Man. And uh, and to add to that, if you remember in the last few preseason games, Nkunku was playing left on the left hand mm. side. If mm. uh, if you remember, he was tried uh, as a number ten behind Jackson, but he was also deployed as a, a left left sided uh, winger, uh, the position in which Mudrik played last night. So I think Gallagher is going to be the first name on the team sheet always because Posh likes him. He works really hard. He has made him captain. And mm. if even if Nkunku is fit, and if he was to play Mudrik on the left, I think Nkunku plays as the striker, or he plays uh, behind the striker. Uh, if you are not playing Enzo or Caicedo is not available, Gallagher will always be there. Gallagher will always play because Poch likes hardworking players in his team. And to fit Nkunku, he might play Nkunku on the left or as a striker. But Gallagher is going nowhere. <laughs> I'm pretty oh, sure. The thing. All I'm going to say, just before Yunus goes on this, all yeah. I'm going to say is. I've got no issues with hard-working players. Hmm. But Gallagher has to provide with the ball. What yeah, he consistency, did Fulham, consistency is yeah. an issue. Consistency is the key word. If That's against, the thing. Look, yeah. but against Burnley, I fully expect him to start. But if he flops with the ball again, questions mar- question I, marks will arise. Once I think I think it's the, 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 for me, before Eunice goes, I think it's dependent on the way the opposition plays as well. This was very much a Crystal Palace... Conor Gallagher back at his best. The other team are not necessarily set up in a low block. We're away from home. Remember some of his performances for Palace away from home against City, against Tottenham. In those games, this guy was at his best. And against teams that don't necessarily have a low block and don't sit back. When we're at home and maybe we got a low block and it's really getting very difficult to break it down, I'm not necessarily expecting to see the same performance. I think he's kind of a circumstantial player where in certain games like yesterday, where the team maybe are a little bit open, those Bournemouths as well, Aston Villa, you might get this type of performance potentially, especially in the right eight position where he's playing, as you see on the heat map. This, for me, is his best position. I think his crossing is something that last season, I think we saw glimpses of it. We haven't really fully utilised how good his crossing can be. Um, he's not, like I said, the epicentre of the team in that position. He's kind of just he's kind of just allowed to, to do what he does best, which is be box to box. He doesn't play in the 10 and have to go through everybody or be be the, the fulcrum of the team. He doesn't play too deep and have to do the first phase. I think in that position there, like you said, Miz, like he's drifting. When we have possession and we're building up, you've got Enzo. It's a little bit asymmetrical. He's dropping deep with Caicedo. The way that those two were bopping it, popping it about was beautiful. Yeah. Gallagher was was kind of out of, out of sight, out of mind in those in moments. Then as we get further forward, then he starts to engage. And he makes those runs. And then obviously off the ball, this guy was winning the back possession ridiculously well. And to be yeah. and, and he was more technically sound. You know, he wasn't giving yeah. it away. And I was saying that on the watch along, he was he was he was solid. He didn't he didn't cause me no stress <laughs> at no point. It was good. No, this is this is what he needs to do more consistently. This is why it, this is it's the one thing that you know is gonna separate you from being just a good player or an average player to being someone properly, properly decent. And that's being able to just execute that same performance on a more consistent basis. What we saw yesterday from Gallagher, which I I normally criticize him for the fact that he doesn't um doesn't doesn't decide quick enough, um, mm. loses possession easy when he's on the ball, misplaces passes when he's on the ball. But yesterday was a case of he was opening himself up a lot more. And he wasn't doing it in a way where he was just going sideways and backwards. He was opening himself up, already predetermining exactly where he's going to run into and what space he's going to penetrate. Tur- gets the ball, turns. The amount of time that he was turning and then moving forward and then supplying. But it's like he done it all so quickly, almost like any top midfielder should actually do. 
you already know exactly what you're going to do. You don't decide when you're on the ball. You've decided already knowing exactly what you're going to execute. He was doing that yesterday, and that's, that's what surprised me. I'm like, yo, okay, so you do have it in your locker then. Fantastic. Um, and not just not just that, but when he is linking up and he's providing that one-two and he does decide to run or he's waiting for a dink over the top or he's waiting for a through ball, and then whatever happens from that, we've seen times yesterday where he would get that ball then he'd cross it into the box or he would try and send um, the ball off to, to, to Broya. He's done his job. But at times, wherever, whether it's been misplaced or the keeper's come out for it or it's been blocked or whatever, and then Fulham move back with the ball to go forward, Gallagher is straight away back to defend. And that is one part of his game that you can't doubt. That's something that he's always got. But if he can just execute the technical ability, like you've said, if he can do exactly what he did yesterday, it's quick, it's, it's, um, it's, it's agile, he's moving quickly on and off the ball. He can do all of that and then do the defensive part that we know he can do. We can't ask for more than that. That's the midfield performance that we need from Gallagher week in, week out. Simple. So what we saw yesterday, great. Now it's up to him to keep it up. And it's a performance that doesn't really require to play against a certain system. I know people are going to say, when we play in a low block, that he struggles realistically, you've got more time if you're playing against a low block. Realistically, you should be able to calculate things a little better because you don't have the pressure of the team coming at you. Yesterday in midfield, there were elements of Fulham were trying to nick the ball off us whenever we did get into their half, and they just weren't doing that. At times, we were just too quick for them. And Gallagher was a part of that, so fair play to him. If he can just be quick like he was yesterday, I've got no problems with him. Mm. Mm. It's another one of those ones where when everyone's fit, It'll be interesting to see if he can fight off the competition, but that will be that will be another question. Obviously, when the Lavia's come back and in Cuckoo and Carney, and there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of positions. Uh, there's a lot of players fighting for their place. There really is. So, and the board are always looking at him. Because <laughs> <laughs> regardless of what Poch says, the board keep looking at him. And maybe this is what Poch means about having more of a say on transfers because that mm. quote before the game, it wasn't just about incomings. We talk about. Oh, the incomings, you know, maybe he didn't have much of a say. He wanted the experience. He ended up getting youth. But on the outgoings, they were very ready to sell Gallagher. He wanted to keep Gallagher. Kukurea as well, one-to-one. -one. Mm. Seems like as if he doesn't, you know, seems like he likes him. You know, he doesn't have a big issue with him. But obviously because of Kukurea's wages and you don't necessarily need him and Chilwell making that kind of money and, and one of them clearly not being a starter at left-back. So, but, but again, he's, he's playing him... He played him against Wimbledon when his personal terms were already agreed at Man United. So it doesn't tell me do, that he hates the player. Do you know what that tells me, Matisse, what he said in the press conference? He mm. said, I wasn't aware of him going, leaving. Or This now makes sense. This is why he played him against Wimbledon. This guy was absolutely not aware of <laughs> Kukurea leaving the football club. He said that was, I think, talked by the, the board and the agents, the player's agent. So... This is where I like That's the fact mental, that it? it is mental. This is what I was going to say. That I like the fact that Poch has come out in the press conference and said, "I will be more involved in the transfer window," which is fantastic. I think he should be, which tells me two things: one, he probably wasn't involved as much as we kind of thought in the summer window that just went, um, and two, like he should be allowed. He should be allowed to have certain players that he thinks is going to bring out his type of football so yeah there is a certain degree of look how long is Poch going to stay around is he going to be here for five six seven eight nine ten years you know what I mean we can't be just setting up a team purely based on what he wants there needs to be a, a club focus as well how we want to play down the track but since we are not there yet I think we need to trust how Poch wants to play the football and right now he likes Gallagher um he tends to have you know no issues with Kukurea. so let him let him build the kind of team that he wants to build I, I just don't want any more issues come the January window and then you know players like Kukurea and 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 Gallagher are the ones that are getting shipped off when clearly you can see the manager whether we like it or not is a different situation right? I think all of us will say okay come January you know if Gallagher needs to go he'll he'll have to go but if the manager actually wants to keep him, I think I think he has every right to do that. For yeah. for me, it was always it was always simple. Like I would have cashed in. I ain't got no problem ever admitting that I would have cashed in when that when them 40, 50 yeah. million bids were coming in. I was like, yeah, me Yo, too. Me too. This is this is good money. But if Poch wants to keep him, listen, 
I'm 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 all for it because outside of Lukaku, that was the only player I was gonna massively disagree with Poch <laughs> immediately. Like if he wanted to keep Lukaku, I would have I would have been like, yo, no, <laughs> some things are bigger than, than system. Sorry, this is not we're not doing this right now. But everybody else, it's not a problem. Any anybody else can stay, man. Um, whatever you need. So yeah, it was it was a really balanced midfield, man. And um, long may it continue. Hopefully against Burnley, it goes the same way. I think Gallagher could be absolutely crucial before we move on. I think Gallagher could be absolutely crucial against these these big teams coming up because we we probably won't dominate possession and we probably won't you know play the beautiful game against Arsenal maybe against City. This is where Gallagher can really show because like mm. I said, up against the once we start to get ourselves back to where we should be as a team, I think the boom of the Fulham's potentially the Villas will start to respect us again over the over the next few years, months, and the low blocks will start to come back. And that's where I do feel, I know you said more time and space units, but then you got to be even more intricate. intricate. And that's where I would have my, my concern with, like, can you unlock the door? I'd probably ask for another creative player instead on the dribble or on the on the pass, whether it's a Carney. I'd be looking at those players to come into the team more on a low block or an Nkuku, an extra man in the box for finishing. For sure. But but these big teams, actually, <laughs> if we go away from them to City... I would. I, I can't think of many more players needed more than than Gallagher the way the way that he's been playing this season. We go to the Etihad. I need that man out there with with a ten out of ten because he he can bridge the gap. He he can be maybe two players off the ball in one at, 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 in a sense. So we will be chasing that ball <laughs> quite a lot. So yeah, I think there's some mm. big games coming up for him, man. There's some big games coming up for him. Um, so hopefully hopefully he's on it. And then I mean, obviously Broya. It feels good to have that boy back. Who was who was really hyped on Borja? Was everybody here hyped on Borja when when before the injury or or, or more so? Yeah, not, not so much before the injury. So, yeah, I, I know Miz was a I big thought, fan. I think. Of I, yeah, I, I thought he would have been sold. I I, I thought mm-hmm. he he would be sold. Uh, and I think he would have been sold if it hadn't been for Nkunku's injury. Uh, because we knew that apart from Jackson, the only out and out recognized striker that we would have is Borja. Because Nkunku mm. was out long term. Once Nkunku is fit, I don't see Broa uh, fe- uh, featuring at all. So it's up to him that whatever chances he's getting, he has to prove himself. He has to score some goals and create that selection headache for Pochettino. And uh, as far as the players being sold is concerned, Martson will definitely be sold. I get that feeling. Chaloba is virtually gone. He's not anywhere near the team right now. And Broa will also be a casualty of that because we need to balance the books. That homegrown players, that you know, straight profit thing that you have to. But show you know what? The, books. Hmm. The, the reason why I have a bit of hope for Matson is because there is no pure profit there because he's his contract running up, so we ain't gonna make no hmm. money. So apparently, he's so got one year. So there's, there's, there's a one so year. So there's this thing, thing, right? You either extend or you will be sold in January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, he's, but we can't. Trigger the thing one... is, we can't. We can't force him to leave. We saw that in the summer when we tried to force these guys to go. They they said we're not going anywhere. They did a Wolf of Wall Street and they stood up on the stage, all the Cobham guys, and they said we're not going anywhere. They said we are not Don't going go anywhere. With me. So we can we, we could try to sell Matson, but if Matson decides that actually I'm going to stay until the end of the season and leave on a free, he's more than within his right to do that. And I don't think the money that we'll be getting in January will be will be that impressive. It might be eight, nine, ten million max. Someone that's got that literally you can negotiate with for the summer, you're not going to get more than that. So, Jorginho money, what we got from Arsenal. Um, I think we should be given a new contract. I saw some of your videos on it. I, I think this guy should be, be given a new contract. He should be staying, man. His versatility is so necessary. We always have a player that can play in multiple positions like this to a very high level or good level. You look at the James Milners, and, and for me, you know, more excited than a Milner. If you're looking at Milner, maybe back at Aston Villa days, but you always need a player in the squad that can play left, can play right, can show himself to be useful centrally, full back. This guy can play so many different positions, and he's ours already. And when he when he plays, he doesn't look out of place. He should have scored actually. He hit the post. Should have scored Bro, in that. In that would have been a banger. Off. It would have been a banger. It was a, but the way that he placed that shot, again, you can see that the technical quality is there. He didn't just smash it, lash at it. This guy said, listen, I'm trying to put this in the top corner. And he was so close to doing it. Maybe Enzo on the follow-up should have just dinked it and we could have been freeing it up as well. So we should really be keeping this guy. Really should be keeping him, in my opinion. So 
I hope he stays. I know Bubba thinks he'll leave. He probably will, probably will. <laughs> but I'm hoping he stays because I, I also I want him to great... stay. But yeah, but we have an overloaded squad right now because of the injuries. It feels like okay, there's place for everyone. Everyone will get proper opportunities. But I don't think so. In the long run, it would be possible to give everyone the equal amount of opportunities that they want. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's going to That's be it. difficult to keep every every player. I didn't. I don't know if this report was a good link. I just saw Man City and Matson's name in the same tweet, and I was like, "What the hell?" But <laughs> if you're trying to shrink the squad down, for me, these players are even more important because you look at City; they have players that can play multiple positions. That's how their squad is so condensed because they can move a Bernardo Silva from right wing to centre mid to Cam, or etc. With other players as well, Ake left back to left centre back. They've got players that can play multiple positions, but also See, play but it to a good level. It's there's this thing uh is how much of a say manager has on these transfer uh, things mm. right if owners are involved in everything if owners the marts are not fit enough to play in our best 11 and they think they need to move him on they think that gallagher should be sold and there is no hold of the manager whatsoever then none of this will matter the how uh, in how many position a player can play it has to be manager's call first and i don't think so it's still there still owners are calling the shots it's still owners who are making those decisions and it, it's okay it is for the betterment of the team in some ways but it is still a business at the end of the day and they will prioritize business decision first in my opinion what we've seen from them so far so think, how much think, of a hold pochettino has i am not, i'm not sure i think what needs to happen is for the time being pochettino definitely needs to have a lot of say. I completely get that the owners um, are having a lot of say. I know the board are trying to um, design a team for us for years to come. But right now, right now, because this is the thing, we focus, we, since the new owners have come in and the new board has been organized, the focus has been on the future. And what the trap we're falling into is by looking at the future, we are forgetting that the present is disintegrating. It's disappearing. And without the present, we'll never reach the future. So how do we protect the present? I think the present can be only protected by Pochettino. We need to give him the, yep. the key to, to run the show for the time being. Whether we like it or not, I think a lot of us will probably agree that, okay, some of us are not staunch you know, um, supporters of Pochettino from the get-go. Uh, some of us are very, very staunch supporters of him. Whatever that is, that aside, that debate aside, I think we can all agree this man needs to have full control. Um, if, if Poch says to the board right now, look, for my immediate success, I need Kukurea, I need Gallagher, I need Martin, I need XYZ, I think the board will have to compromise. And from there, look, one thing I will agree, once everyone is fit, and I don't know whether that is ever going to be possible at Chelsea Football Club, but let's just say for a in a in a in a euphoric situation where everything is happy, everyone is all jolly, and everyone is fit, right? Everyone is fit. I think Baba, you're right. There has to be a trim down again because mm. not everyone's going to get an opportunity. We don't yeah. even talk about Medweka. Medweka only came on for like 30 seconds. Um, and already Medweka is becoming a bit yes. of an afterthought. And, but he and needs to be are, And as we are speaking, I, have, I, I thought about Carney also. Carney is also fit. Chukumika. He will be also in the scheme of things. Chuku, yeah. Exactly. Chukumika. Uh, Uguchuku. Mm. You know, he's another name. Uh, Romeo Lavia. Like we've not even, he's not even entered the scene. So there's a lot of players. And then when you start bringing the superstar in, in the likes of Nkunku, and hopefully he stays fit, then players like Chukomeka, players like Matsen, who are so far below the, uh, you know, the, the food chain, will definitely not see the see see minutes. So once we do look right now, I can't even think about a particular situation where everyone is fit. When it does happen, we'll yeah. get to that and we'll figure things out. Right now, the way I look at it, Armando Breuer, as Matisse was saying, I think this is a perfect competition for Nicholas Jackson. I think now. Mm. Nicholas Jackson, after looking yeah. at that performance against Fulham for Breuer, Nicholas yeah. Jackson be like, oh, my days, I can't pick up those silly yellow cards anymore because <laughs> if I'm suspended again, 
This brother gonna eat up my position very I mean, quick. Uh, and, and 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 I need to score goals. I yeah, need no, to no, score no. goals. Uh, I mean, this no, guy's score. Pochettino likes Broya mm. a lot, uh, mm. and the fan base likes Broya a lot. Jermaine, you know not just because he's a Cobham product, but we've seen what he did for Southampton. We saw we saw what he was capable of doing last season as well before he got injured. So Broya for me, and this is why I've not been entertaining all of these. Um, you know, Ossiman and, and Ivan Tony. All I said that, look, no, 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 no. let's wait till January. Let's wait till January, see what happens. Let's check out Breuer and Jackson till January. Let's see what they can give us. Then we'll make a decision. Similarly with Ian Martin, I think Poch should try and deploy Ian Martin a lot more. This guy's got loads of technical ability. Loads Tons. of technical ability. Tons. So yeah. we can use him in multiple areas. And I don't know why Poch doesn't. And I hope he does soon. And if he does that, then I'm, I'm hoping that the board will see that an important offer needs to be made to Ian Matson. I think Matson and um, Palmer are the ones that bring a bit of balance to those wide options. Mm, they're a little bit more technical in terms of, maybe, I don't even want to say technical, maybe that's too basic, but they're a little bit more all eyes on, on the pitch they, they're they're all seeing all knowing you know what i mean they have they, they see the bigger picture they're able to yeah. connect connect the dots a lot better and we've got the badawekes and the mudricks and the sterlings that are more head down run you know dribble da, 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 whatever those two for me are, are are important to keep with the likes of one two of mudrick madaweke and sterling i'd be looking at two i'd be looking at one of those three and with Mudrik, obviously the biggest investment, he won't be him. <laughs> I'll be looking at one of Sterling or Madaweke. You need to really fight for your place in this squad going forward I because agree. I think Matson and Palmer, again, like I said, against a lot of the opposition we face, they're very important players to have because they're able to to help us put together good combinations and some good one twos, and they just they're just so intelligent. They're just so intelligent. You don't see them running into into corridors or into you know into mm. in, 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 into traffic. You don't see that. They always got their head up and they're trying to find that little intricate little mm. moment, that little pass. And I think the, the team needs that with with Enzo as well. So they're yeah, capable but, of doing that as well. They are. They are. Like they, they they don't just think it. They execute it. And this um mm. they they even in moments where they keep it simple, but there's a plan. Like they've thought about what they're doing. Cole Palmer, mm. I say, was a clear example of that. You just see he's mm. so eloquent and elegant on the ball. Like it's just, he, he knows, ex basically, he knows exactly can, what he's doing. You can Aren't tell he's come from City, right? You yeah. can yeah. tell the way he plays that he's been at City. But this is the thing. I, I said this on the review as well. I said, well, Sterling came from City too, but it's not the same story. Do you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's a case of Palmer. <laughs> well, Miz might disagree. Palmer. Um, I hate and, you, Eunice. And Matson. <laughs> Palmer and, and, and Matson are players that just have the brains. And I agree. There's going to be games, even against top teams, where we need brains. We need players that are going to find solutions and know exactly where to be able to catch oppositions out when it doesn't seem so obvious instead of just being so specific and just doing the same thing over and over and over again, hoping for a breakthrough, because that's what some of our players have been doing. Yeah, Matson alongside Palmer, absolutely need to keep. And look, if there is going to be a team that's going to come in, then they're going to have to give us big money. I don't care. That's how I would approach it. Mm. It's an interesting one. I mean, there does need to be cuts because there are too many players. Like, like Miss said, though, I can't see a world where everyone's fit anyway. I mean, we literally borderline had a couple injuries in that game over it was cramp or whatever. So what I don't want to happen in January is another big switch around of players again. Like if it's going to be an outgoing, maybe one, maybe, maybe one, but like, I don't want there to be too much movement because if we're trying to build up some sort of consistency, we need to keep this group, especially if they're happy and the mood's positive, And then they do start to pick up some results before in around Christmas, December, if we get through this really tough patch of fixtures, which to be honest, I still think we can win some games in that in that fixture. Obviously, people shit themselves in the fixture list, but I've always felt like we should be trying to target some wins. Brighton at home, we have win. Mm. Brentford, Man United, Brentford at home win. Man United, Old Trafford. I'm sorry, I said it to Cam's. I'm coming for that. I'm coming. Arsenal for at home, a good performance. Arsenal, uh, Arsenal have been I, playing I, that great, bro. They're not been play, playing. Yeah, that good. but but Arsenal are their levels ahead of us right now. So I'll take. I'll That's take fair. Point. I'll take a point. 
I'll take a point. And um, Spurs away, I'm sorry, but I don't care how oh. good they are. That can't happen. <laughs> they can't beat us, no. It can't happen. That, if they beat us, it's an illegal result. <laughs> lads, um, especially all about, is homecoming. Nah, nah, we can't lose. We can't lose. Lads, it's it's all about momentum, right? So win against Brighton, win against Fulham, pick up a win against Burnley. Just you know, build that momentum. Football is all about momentum, man. There's a shift. There could be a shift. So, you know, come that Arsenal game, if we have a victory against Burnley, I know there's that international break once again in an awful, awful time. Awful. Just time. when we are getting like a bit of momentum. But nonetheless, if we can if we can get that victory against Burnley and then move into that Arsenal fixture with three wins in a trot, well, why can't we be tad bit confident? Why yeah, can't absolutely. we be tad bit confident that, you know what, we should give them a good game? Do you know what I mean? So pressure be on Arsenal to get the victory at, at, at Emirates, right? Is it it's is it at the Emirates or is it uh, I think it'd be at Stamford Bridge, I think. No, I think it's at the bridge. Is it at the bridge? I, so, I remember our performance against them last season at the bridge was one of the most infuriating performances. It was that was painful. I last was so angry. Was a lot of bad performances. But even better I, if it's in front of a home crowd. I, like, I keep saying it. I'm looking forward to the games. I said it when we were losing. I'm, I'm still looking forward to the games. I know this fixture list is bad, but I'm looking forward to these matches. I can't wait. People think we're going to perform better. For punishment. I don't, I don't know no, what it I is. I think like, we're going to perform better against the better teams. L- last season, the way that the team was constructed with all of those older players, and I could see a lot of them didn't seem to care anymore, and there was a lot of uncertainty with their futures and the running out of contracts. I was just like, this team don't care anymore, man. And then we're going through Potter to Bruno and then Lampard. I was like, bro, this season's finished. I wasn't looking forward to games. This Please team, put bro. some respect to Bruno's name, man. Come on. He's yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Manager. Let's take Bruno he's, out of that. He's my he brother. Got he got Ball a good brother. But Lampard... But he's left, though. I was so oh, sad yeah, when he, he left. Yeah, talk, talk, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you didn't even get a statement. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny, bro. <laughs> That's too funny. But no, nah, listen, I'm looking forward to the games, man. People think I'm joking when I say that. I'm looking forward to the games. I, I know it's frustrating because we don't take our chances. And another thing has been decision-making, which is why I'm pushing Matson and Palmer so much because I think they improved the decision-making drastically up there. I, I think they'll play the right pass and pick the right... I don't think Palmer and Matson running two-on-one on a keeper are going to shoot. I think they're going to play that pass to Jackson. That's a tapping. I think we, I think these guys will, if we're looking for those tappings, those clear cut opportunities, Palmer mm. against Brighton, laying it on a plate for Jackson twice. I think these two players, Matson in preseason, we spoke about it. Why can't he maybe play 10? Because he's laying it through in behind to Jackson. These two players are the ones that will help us walk the ball into the net. That's how I see it. Because when, when everything's going really quick, they slow everything down. And that, those are the players there you have to watch out for. The ones that slow things down in the final third, and are able to live amongst the chaos. And those two seem like they're definitely able to do that. So I look at them massively for, for the decisions. And then Dennis tap-ins. And if people are missing open goals, then I don't know. It's, we have to start finding you. I can't lie. we start dock, docking your wages. So <laughs> that's how I see it. Um, so, yeah, on, on the game, perfect. No William winner. Uh, we, we escaped that. Thank he he did. Thank God for that. Got a shot away, right? At the end. He did, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I was worried. I was like, he's gonna put this <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. back of the net. Yeah, in the real time, it looked like it's heading for the top corner, but yeah, it was straight yeah. the <laughs> But um, I guess Sanchez de Sassi, these guys, I want to get your thoughts on Sanchez, your... man. Why does he has this bad habit of you know making that one terrible pass per game, man? In the last uh, in the Brighton game, he passed it straight to Jao Pedro. Yesterday, also we got lucky when he uh, mm. passed it to Pereira, I think it was. Was it Pereira? Yeah, I think it might have been Pereira. I think so, yeah. But, but overall, I, I don't think he was too bothered. Besides that one time, um, there was that 1v1 opportunity where he, he was called upon and he stuck his leg out. That was a top, top save from him in the second half. Um, I, I feel like he's coming into his element, man. There was a, there's a particular clip that's going around on X where uh, the ball was bouncing towards him and he just dives in and collects that ball. <laughs> uh, when I saw that live on the watch, I was like, wow, this guy, man, this guy's hilarious, diving for everything. But I think I think he's having a good time. Post-match, I saw Poch, they were showing some images. Poch went around Robert Sanchez and they were hugging each other. And I think Poch really likes this guy as well. And um, 
his distribution obviously against Brighton wasn't good. That first half was, oh my God, what the hell? But this game, there were a couple of passes he made from deep, you know, nice little long passes, pinpoint accuracy. Yeah, straight even to the, low. Straight to the, even low. So, even low. Um, yeah. And this, like I said, it, look, I, I don't think Sanchez is, is that world class level goalkeeper that we all desire, right? But I did say when we did the transfer that I, I do believe he is a tad bit better than better than Kepa. Um, and this is not taking anything away from Kepa. Kepa is doing really good for Real Madrid. But look, football is all about, as I said, man, it's momentum. It's it's that feel-good factor. Once winning becomes a habit, you'll mm. see every player rising their levels. Once yeah. the defence starts keeping more clean sheets, after more clean sheets, after more clean sheets, you'll see keepers buzzing. You'll see defenders buzzing. You'll see the fullbacks buzzing. We kept a clean sheet against Brighton, right? We beat yeah. them... One nil? Did we beat them one nil? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One nil or two nil? One nil, yeah. So there was a clean sheet there. Clean sheet against um, uh, Fulham. Hopefully we can keep a clean sheet against Burnley. This is all builds up your confidence. Do you know what I mean? So uh, at the moment, that's all we need to focus on. As as uh, Cams would say, Matisse would know this and Yunus probably as well. One game at a time, man. One, one game, game at a at time. Let's see. One game at a time. Don't want to look too forward. <laughs> Too far ahead. Mm. Except for him, it backfires. <laughs> Literally, I said to him, bro, bro, listen, I've got I've got a nice clip and I say it, I say it to him when I see him, I say it here. I got a nice I was I was going through my YouTube recommended um randomly off after the game, you know, enjoying the highlights as well when they were uploaded, enjoying the goals. And I see DR Sports clips and I and I click into it, F FCM podcast. I said, Oh, what's this? And it's a maze, you know, having to fight off the dogs, the dogs, as a Chelsea <laughs> fan. And at the end of the clip, it said, "Actually, you know, what? maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just send it and play it here because it's, it's, it's really not, it's not, it's not really a joke to be honest. It's not a joke. It's one of those things where I don't, I don't tend to, I don't tend to keep these, these clips for myself too often. But this one here, this one was a piss take. I'm sorry." This, this one, me and him was going back and forth on DR before. This this one was a piss take. As a Chelsea supporter, I could not take it. I said, you know what? We will be there. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not having this. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna play this for you guys. <laughs> I'm, I was not having this. I, I'm I've been I've been trying to defend the, the the team as much as possible. Obviously, it's not been easy the last year or so. But this this level of disrespect, <laughs> it can't run. It cannot run, man. Let me see if I can get this up on screen. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see. It cannot run, man. Uh, I'm curious about how how yeah, deep it's going to be now, man. Uh, I didn't see this clip. The build up is. Let crazy. me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you. When you see this, <laughs> when you see this prediction, you're going to be like, Do you know what? Okay, we need to we need to respond. For some reason, it's not letting me. Oh, why is it not letting me upload it? It's probably Cam. No, it's not letting Cam's me. Cam's not letting you do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what? I'll play it instead. I'll play it on my phone, and then one day it will be inserted into a video when it's clearly wrong, when it's incorrect. It will be used against him in the in court at the end of the season, and we need to beat him. We need to beat him at Old Trafford as well, just to just so I can rub it in. But this is this is the clip. Chelsea are not finishing in the top 10. You hear that? <laughs> Chelsea, Chelsea are not finishing, are in, the not 10. finishing in the top 10. Chelsea are not finishing that's, that's, in I'll the top 10. I'll be honest. That's, with that's not as far-fetched, you know. No, it, no, it, no, Eunice. No, Eunice, it is. It is. It is. It is. <laughs> Oh, Have you seen how we were playing, brother? Top 10 is wild, man. Top 10. Nah, not nah, finishing nah. top 10 it's is It's too disrespectful. I've got Abby on DR telling United me... United might not either. I've got Abby telling me we're going to finish ninth. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, nah, nah. I know we've yeah. not started well, and I know we've all had our, um, you know, scepticism about the situation. But to say we're going to be outside of top 10, that, like, to repeat last season again, off the back of the first six matches, that's pretty mad. Uh, that well, is this will not be long. This will not be last season. Yeah. It's I've it's crazy. It, it shouldn't be like last season. 
prior to the Brighton game, it very it very much felt like last season. <laughs> and yeah, this is why it, like, it felt like. But, it. You, you, but you know what? It's all going to be made or, or it's, 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 there's a make or break in these games that are going to start from Arsenal onwards. Like that's 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 where if we get results during that time, we're definitely not finishing top ten, but bottom ten, hundred percent. If we bottle it. <laughs> And I'm sorry, it's a, it's a possibility. It's a mm. possibility. But look, because we've got to play all these teams so, so close to each other, that's the most difficult thing. We've got to play everyone no matter what. But having to play everyone so close to each other in such a crucial part of the season, just pre-Christmas, where that sets the tone for you at Christmas, you kind of have an idea of where you're going to finish. Yeah, we got to get results. we got to get results. Thankfully, we're starting to show that now, just in the nick of time. And then it's momentum, it's consistency. It's up to us. And I'm going to say something very wild. Go for it. Oh, shit. This team fully fit, even for five months, makes top three easily. Easily. No question. Boom! Boom, Baba! For five Come months. <laughs> yeah. If, if we are having all the players available for five months, no injuries. Oh, no injuries, no nothing. Yeah, yeah. This team, I would have said the this title, but uh, start has been absolutely be... shit. I'd like to think, yeah. <laughs> because look, if, we, if we look at our predictions before the season started, we were all saying that sort of thing anyway, weren't we? Yeah. We were saying, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Th- second, third, yeah. fourth, like, yeah. yeah. So If this is if this team's fit, and I don't even mean, it doesn't, not even all of it, like just only normal hmm. amount of injuries, one or two pe- people injured at once, right? Say, I don't know, a Leslie Okuchuku and a Madaweke, two people not fit, something like that. Nothing, nothing too drastic. We, we, I wouldn't even flinch at top, top Champions League. I wouldn't even flinch. I'm rightly so. And the next the thing you know, Burnley bursts their bubble. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't even flinch. <laughs> but I'm still, I still got us in the top five. I'm not going to lie. I still got us in the Champions League. Minimum. That's my aim. I'm not changing my objective. I said Champions League at a bare minimum, we have to. But I did say that. Before we got Kaiseido, I said sixth after Kaiseido, we were like, I was like, let's try and get to top, um, well, Champions League. But then obviously the start that we had, um, I said, even then we should still be aiming for sixth, bare minimum. But top I 10, would, like, that's a I given. Would, I would rock, if, if it's anything I would less than 10. I would rather have our team, the main United's team. When they asked me the question, who would you prefer, position would you prefer to be in? When they when they asked me the question, what what who would you prefer to be in? What shoes would you prefer? I pick Chelsea over Man United every single day of the week. Every single day of the week. There's much more talent in our team than in theirs. In Cuckoo, absolutely walks into absolutely. their team. Palmer, Palmer walks into their team. Walks. And it's not yeah, just about the team. And it's not just about the team or the setup or the manager. It's about the whole institution. Man United as an institution is quite struggling at the moment with their whole ownership thing and all of that. The fans are not happy with you. Exactly. At, at least the whole club's a mess. At least we don't have fans who are every week out there protesting against the owners yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yet. But right now, we are in a better position. Hands down. No questions asked. This is what I've always said when a lot of people were saying when we were going through the losses, right? The first six games. I said to a lot of people, I refuse to believe our squad of 1 billion is incapable of winning games. Like, I refuse to believe that. I refuse yeah. to believe that the, that the team that we've assembled in this summer transfer window is incapable of getting better results than what we've got so far. A lot of people were saying, no, this, this squad's rubbish. This squad's mid-table. This team is mid-table. This, I said, no, no. You should point a lot of the fingers at how Pochettino is deploying some of these players. And look at it now. Right players in the right positions. Oh, surprise, surprise. We're getting better, better results. So... Uh, oh, Chilwell at left wing has made us win games. <laughs> well, the Luton no one. Chilwell, no Chilwell at left wing has made us win games. Oh, yeah, no yeah, yeah. No Chilwell. Yeah, yeah. No Chilwell mm. at left wing back has mm. made, a, made us win games. Palmer playing more centrally, uh, even though he was on the on the right side, but there were times where he was coming in centrally as well, not hugging the touchline, right, um, is helping us win games. So more of these, you know, Enzo playing a little bit deeper is helping us as well. So the more mm. Hodge keeps doing this, 
we will win games. It's as simple as that. But the more Poch wants to complicate matters and have, you know, for instance, Gallagher play as the deepest midfielder or have Chua wants his fit as a left winger again or X, Y, Z, right? All, all sorts of craziness. Then we're, we're not going to see those results. So, yeah, carry on how things have been going for the time being. Mm. Pick up more wins. Yeah. Uh, let's fly through these super chats quickly before we come to an end. Um, give these Burnley predictions. We played like 2005 Chelsea, not heavy possession side, uh, um, passing. <laughs> Yeah, calm down, bro. Yeah. Please, please calm down. <laughs> <laughs> calm Baba, down. Baba, Baba, Baba took great offense, great offense to hear in 2005 <laughs> Chelsea. <yeah. laughs> well, free, free. I I uh, appreciate the positivity, but please, we need to calm down. <laughs> what a song? Calm down. <laughs> Forty uh, four, free, free. Actually, um, letting Fulham have some of the ball, um, press and dangerous on the counter. Um, Big up, bro, for the super chat. Why do you guys think um, they took their foot off the gas in the second half? I was game not, management. No problem. Game management. Game management. No problem with it. Manage the game. Get a clean sheet. Save yourselves for the game against Burnley. Don't get injured. I'm not bothered. If you perform like that in the first half, you get your two goals. You, for me, you have the right to see out the game any way, which way you want, depending on how you, how you, yeah, yeah depending on yeah. how you feel it needs to be done. That is the one thing that the old Chelsea used to do very well. We didn't always go exactly. and slap a team 5-6-0. Sometimes we used Don't to get to. the two goals and just, that's it, game over. Shut down the whole shop, finished. We're not moving. We're, we're just, this game has just ended. And I, I want that control and that professionalism because we need points. I don't need I don't need uh, 90 minutes of glitz and glamour. And, so it, and if anything, here. the first half could have actually been three or four. So mm. that's been. what we got to yeah. aim for got to aim to finish games off within the first 45 minutes banging two three four goals calm down a little for, bit for, in for, for, really Fulham are a team yeah. Fulham are a team that are nine like I said 20th for shots and 19th for big chances created so we know soon a lot that if we just just you know sit ourselves in a nice position and manage ourselves they're not going to they're not going to score the only time they're going to score is if we maybe get a little bit too Hockey and a little bit too arrogant, start throwing everyone forward and then leave space in behind. Then anything can happen yeah. for any team. So, yeah, man, if the game's won, the game's won. This team needed to win this game. This wasn't about showing off. This was about we need these points. Sorry, Eunice, what was and this, is, this is the course of the season. This is how it's meant to be. It's a marathon. It's oh. not a sprint. You, you have to remember, um, we aren't going to be glitz and glamour every single game or try and, you know, uh, outperform our XG and this stat and that stat. Like, no, we need three points. I don't care how we get it. We need three points. We kill off games early and then are able to use that to just sit back and just take it easy or play on the counter and do what we got to do. Then that's what we're going to do. And it's not going to be pretty. And if anyone wants to criticize it, just show them three points and stuff it in their faces. End of story. <laughs> Mad. Uh, fair play. In other words, violence. <laughs> oh, listen, like I said, we just need to win our games. When it comes to Pochettino, at least I want to see one season and then everybody can have their little, you know, conclusions then. But for me, going through multiple managers in one season again would just be absurd. I'd be onto the ownership massively. Um, hopefully some January, uh, come January, we can still be in the top 10, eight. Then I'm sure we can make Europa. Then Poch got to focus on building a Europe. team for the EPL in Europe because we, yeah. um, we got That's the right way to go about it. I, the only thing I ask in January is that if you're going to bring in a player and it's a striker, fair enough. If the opportunity arises that you just cannot pass up because a lot of the finishing has been abysmal. But do not add three, four, five players. Do not sign three, four, five, 18 year olds mm. and stick them out mm. on loan at teams that are not going to play them. That is the last request and pr hope that I have. January window, if you have to move one out, one in, two out, one in, but just please. Just leave the bulk of the team alone. And Andre Santos Agreed. should be a, a lesson to everyone. This guy is not even playing right now. That better change after the Bro, international Whoever break. decided that. That I better knew change. From the get -go. I knew it from the get-go. Like, everybody was getting hyped. Club. Everyone was hyping. I was like, what, for what? What, are people, what are people getting excited about? This He is going to the mini Chelsea. They make Bro, so they've got that 786 players over there. Oh, I don't know what the hype <laughs> was. 
I genuinely don't know what the hype was with him going to Forest. I can't, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I said, what? Forest? Do they integrate young players like that? Do they? Do they? Do they play? Are they going to play a player like that? I don't. I don't know about all of that. They. They have got way too many options. He better start playing games because if we don't have a break clause and we've wasted a whole year, I'm. I'm gonna be fuming on that one. That was some next level foolishness if he doesn't play. Yeah. He's way too good to be to be chilling on the bench like that. It's. Re- Ugh. If I speak, if I speak, but this is why you I don't still- sign too many players. No, well, well, you know, I still think we need about four or five players in January, man. We need a dopamine. <laughs> we need a dopamine. We need, yes, we find someone, you know, and we, we get that like five or six times and then we, we, we go back to, we go back to base. So. Mm. Listen. Now I'm with, I'm with Matisse. I think maximum, if it's a striker that you just simply can't pass. Okay. But I still, ha- I'm still saying. Let's see Jackson and Breuer till January. Let's actually see what they yeah, do true. for us. If these guys explode, then let's have a conversation. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? And if they don't explode, all right, then, well, there you go. You know what you need to do. Uh, there's no need to bring in any more players than that. There really isn't. Not now. We'll assess people, it in people, summer. People forget before this, Breuer's been injured. And then Cuckoo's been injured. That's not the plan. We're not meant to have one striker. We're meant to have three. Washington, that's not even, we're not even talking about Washington here. And Cuckoo has played up front in preseason. We know he can score goals. And Broyer, the manager massively believes in him. So listen, we'll, we'll see if, if that belief is repaid. Obviously, he's got to recover from that injury. But he looked good yesterday. He, he did look very good. And I've always, since he's come into the team, I've liked Broyer. He's been, he's, he's, I know he hasn't got the same level of goal output as Tammy. But I think he's a, he's been a lot more in control of his body than Tammy was when he was in the team. Like he's not falling, flopping. He holds the ball up well. He lays it yeah, off. No, like, no. like he's got he's got good pace. Um, if he can recover from that injury with no problems, I, I think he's I think he's he's a he's a dark horse. He's one to keep an eye on. I've always thought that he could potentially contribute. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see. We're gonna wrap up, guys. Um, Eunice, let the people know where to find you, bro. It's been a pleasure. No, it has been, man. Absolutely. And I'm looking forward to seeing how we hopefully bring momentum forward into the Burnley game. Um, I mean, there's focus now this week, Champions League and whatnot, so focus will be away from us. But, um, yeah, bring on Burnley, round this all off with another win, and then if we go three wins, momentum into the Arsenal game, then happy days. So hopefully that's going to be the case. And, um, yeah, I'll be giving my thoughts, as usual, as normal. Eunice Talks Football, so you can find me there. There you go, guys. Link is in the description. Um, Miz, let the people know to find you, bro. It's been a pleasure. Great show. Yeah, man. Fantastic show, like always. The other side of the coin, uh, just dropped the review a couple of hours ago. I just couldn't do it straight after the match. My throat was just absolutely hammered. So do check out my review if you haven't. And uh, hopefully my throat gets better and better because I really do want to cover Galatasaray versus Man United because... <laughs> My man, hopefully Hakim Ziyech is playing. Is it tonight? And I want to see Man United lose. Um, I don't tonight? know whether it's... It is tonight, yeah. It's tonight, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Galatasaray. Is Galatasaray at home or away to Old Trafford? No, it's at Old Trafford. Oh, All right, he's at Old Trafford. So hopefully Old Trafford. Ziyech can play. I'm looking forward to a banger. I just don't know. I just have this feeling, man. I have this feeling in the air that Ziyech is going to pull out an absolute stunner, man. I'm going to be so excited. Game. <laughs> it's a madness. Baba, listen, Ziyech, I'm actually going to be watching that game. So hopefully Ziyech does pull up a masterclass. Yeah, is, a, is Icardi going to play as well? Uh, yeah, he's yeah. he, he the striker. Yeah, right? yeah. And Zaha as well. So yeah, Zaha, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ziyech, Akai. It's a there. good Galatasaray game, bro. I'm <laughs> telling you. Man United are about to get knocked out. <laughs> Yeah, oh, they say- <laughs> and they, they can't drop into the Europa, can they? Or can uh, they? Yeah. Why can't they? If they come, no. Uh, have they taken off the rule in terms of, or is that from next season when they reformat oh, in the Champions League? The new format, maybe the new format. Yeah, I think it's a new oh, format. The yes, new you format. can't drop down into Europa. It's not this season. So, this season, so they can. third and fourth, you're dead. You're finished. You're dead. You're dead. Wow. But this That's season bad. they can. So no third, third, you might make the playoff. 
Oh, okay. So yeah, the, the new format player. is there's playoffs between second and third to go to the last 16, but fourth, oh, you're right. dead. And third, okay. you're, some, some third, you'll be dead as well. And if you and lose the from, playoff, you're dead. And that's from 24-25. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So this is the Mad. last season we attempt to do that thing. Um, Baba, let the people know how to find you, bro. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, man, great show. Always good when Chelsea wins games. <laughs> that is very rare <laughs> since the last season. So I'm going to drink it drink this moment <laughs> till Burnley comes. Uh, yeah, Drog Baba, uh, same as always. Uh, I'm currently doing a player career mode on my channel, on the mm -hmm. FC24. So, to make sure, sure to check it out, it's really fun. And yeah, uh, we are very close to 100k on Instagram. So, please do make sure you follow me on More Instagram as well. We are around 97k yes. over there. So, yeah, it would be a great help. And thank you so much, Matisse. Pleasure, bro. Pleasure. Mm. Um, By the guys, way, just quickly, uh, seems mm. like ZH might not play. Some people are saying on the live chat, man. Oh, I'm so bummed. Oh, I'm not no. watching that game. Oh. I'm not watching that game, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was looking. I was looking but, forward to that. I was looking forward yeah. to that. Why is he injured? <laughs> yeah, is he injured or something? Why is he not playing? That's you know what he, he does get injured quite a bit. He does get injured <sighs> quite a bit. Well, guys, make sure you smash up the likes, subscribe to the channels. Links in the description. We'll see you guys for the watch alongs later. And um, until then, in a bit, people, peace. Big up.